Live from the Pepper J Production Studios in Hollywood, California, it's time for Actors Eat Chat Show. Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, with nearly 1,400 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide, every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. A co-production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kurt Kelly company. It's the Actors E-Chat Show. What's up, world? My name is Sonia Harley, and you are watching Actors E-Chat on Actors Entertainment. Today, we have an amazing guest, but I'll let you know one thing. We are coming live from Pepper J Studios in the best place on earth, Hollywood, California, baby. Can you guys feel it? The <laughs> sun is shining out here. I don't know where you are, but I'll transfer all of that energy out to you. Today, the special guest that I have, I must say that he takes your breath away. I'll give you three things about him and then you have to stay tuned. He's an actor, he's a singer, and he's a dancer, and he's amazing. So, are you ready? Ah, uh, yeah, it's Emerus Cooper! Yeah. Right here! Yeah. <laughs> I love Hi. my introduction, you're amazing too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was very kind of you. Yeah, right on. <laughs> I'm kind of see, speechless. Aw, uh, <laughs> see, now that's a moment for me. Are you guys capturing it? Somebody better <laughs> capture this. Send it to me. Okay, well. <laughs> it's online now. <laughs> I know, right? Let's get started, um, Emerise, about uh, your career. Like, you started early on. Yeah, I did. And how, were, how was that? Did you know from an early age that this was something that you wanted to do? Yeah, I started dancing when I was about six years old. I, I had way too much energy, so we kind of had to do, make me do something. <laughs> so I kind of just bounced around the dance studio. And um, before you know it, like, I'd been competing and, you know, I was the only boy that was really doing it. Seriously, wow. so they really pushed me. And um, I loved it. So, um, and that kind of progressed to me getting to acting and singing. And then from there, I got into stage school. So from 16, I was training professionally. Oh, so dancing professionally. All three. It was oh, like kind of wow. like the fame kind of, you act, sing and dance all day, every day. So. Okay, so you're from England. Yep. I know there's lots of different parts of England. I did my homework. Oh, good. He's from a place <laughs> in England. Do I not sound English? It's not, uh, well, I don't know, darling. <laughs> I, I think it sounds really good. What do you guys think? I'm, how am I? Did I do pretty good? You did pretty good. <laughs> by the end of the interview, you'll be really, really good. And I'll, oh. be, I'll be American by the end of the day. Ex so. We're going to switch. We'll switch. Exactly. Yeah. That'll be great. It's the show Switched, not Actors-y. <laughs> exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Switched. Okay. I need to get your leather pants on though, and you know. You oh yeah, I know because so we'll actually in, we're in the break. We'll in switch. the break, we'll, yeah. we'll switch. Yeah, <laughs> he is from England, and the place where you're from starts with a D. I'll give you guys three seconds to think about it. Then he's going to tell us where he's from. One, two. Do you know? Okay, where are you from? I'm from Devon, Devon. which Yay! is um, the southwest of the UK, the foot of the UK. It's a very beautiful part of um, England. It's kind of like countrysidey and like a Jane Austen novel. Wow. Does that paint the picture for you? Does it paint a picture? <laughs> Ladies, did you guys melt just for like a few seconds? Okay, so let's get back to the whole dancing, singing, and the acting. So you did all of this um, more strongly from the age of 16 on? Professionally, yeah. I got a scholarship. Um, it was actually to the Central School of Ballet. And I trained very intensely in ballet for two years. And I kind of realized that t I, I loved it, but it wasn't necessarily exactly what I wanted what to do. Wanted I knew to I do. wanted to do more acting and performing in musicals. Okay. And to be a ballet dancer, you have to have, it has to be your life. And um, the discipline yeah, did teach me a lot. Listen. It kind of, yeah, <laughs> it's all there every day. You know, I love, I love ballet, but it wasn't necessarily um, where I wanted my career to go. Oh, wow, you popped up a ballet picture of me. Ooh, I love it. Um, that's me and my friend Charlotte Ellen Price. Yeah. We, we've done a lot of choreography and dance together. She's a beautiful, we actually met at ballet school when I was 16. Oh, wow, um, okay. So, yeah, I moved to more musical theatre and um, acting, singing and dancing when I was 18 at Lane Theatre Arts. Oh, okay. there we go, another one. Oh, that one's great. I <laughs> totally dig that one. The alignment, the body alignment is so important, right, in ballet? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my training was in all three things, all three disciplines. Um, how does that answer the question? Yeah, it answers the question, but you know, I have a question for you. Because I know that my viewers want to know this. Did you guys know that Emery danced with Christina Aguilera? He danced with Madonna and also the Pussycat Dolls. So I, this is what I want. Like I was thinking about this. Give us like a day in the life of Emerus Cooper as a dancer for the Pussycat Dolls. Like how was that? It was hot, sweaty, <laughs> and a lot of hard work <laughs> and long hours. <laughs> was it? Did they I treat you really good? 
Um, I have to say, it's it's not necessarily the girls that pussy get dolls. Um, doing music videos, I did a music video for them. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Hush Hush or something like that. Okay. And uh, we were dancing, and then we had to be on roller skates, and then we were there till maybe four or five in the morning. So let's just say it's hard work. As much as it's very glamorous when you watch the final product, okay. during it, your feet hurt, you sweat, and you might smell a little bit. <laughs> So sorry to break it to you. It's not as exciting as you may think. <laughs> wow, you guys heard that, but I that know was the real deal. That's the real deal. What about okay? So what's the difference in working with uh, Pussycat Dolls, Christina Aguilera, Madonna? Um, their energy towards you and towards the people that they work with, like. I, I want to know from your perspective, because a lot of people want to say, oh, wow, I bet it'd be so cool to work for Madonna or to work, you know, like they treat you really well. They treat you like you're a part of the program. Um, I was very lucky to work with um, a lot of dance, a lot of artists in my dance career. And yeah, there are some artists, and I don't want to name names, but some that are very just closed off. And it's not because they're being rude, but they're kind of in their own world. I got and you. And there's yeah. some that are very warm and they're kind of very inviting and they treat you as an equal. Um, you know, when I worked with Madonna, it was I was so oh, excited Madonna. because you know it was one of the people I grew up from watching on MTV, and I did a music video for her called Sorry. Um, I ended Ooh. up, you know, I worked on it for two days. You can, you know, barely see me in it, but I did have to hold her hand oh, on, ro on roller skates again. Oh, Madonna, not, there she is, right there. We there we go. That's Madonna. Um, and I remember being so nervous because, like, what if I pull Madonna over on her skates and then she's going to kill me? <laughs> kill me. Oh, I broke no. Her hip. Um, so that was really nerve wracking, holding her hand. And I remember, like, she would crack a joke and everyone would laugh like it was the funniest joke on earth. Like, literally, <laughs> she wouldn't even be trying to crack a joke. That's how everyone wants to impress her. Like, but I have to say, oh. Madonna was really lovely and I just okay, really respected good. her work ethic and just everything. She, she knew exactly what she wanted to get. So. I understand how she's running that show. Yeah, she knows who to employ, but she is running that show. Well, I think of Madonna. I kind of, I can, I can think of you and relate the fact that she has so many personas. Like right. she changes her image, she changes everything about her. So when you're doing the acting, the singing, and the dancing, every one is different. The energy yeah. is different. They're all different um, facets of me, and different. I love to be creative, um, and I like different as um, outlets. Okay. So. I'm, I'm sorry, my, my eyes keep falling all over the place. <laughs> I will look at you now. Um, I'm being told to look at you now. So, yeah, I like, I mean, I like to be dramatic. I like to be funny. I like to be romantic. I mean, there's all sorts of parts of me, and it's yeah. fun to keep exploring them. Otherwise, I'd get bored. I get bored really quickly. I couldn't do one thing for too long. I like to mix See, it up. That means that you're, like, really true, a true artist. I think, or just like, ADD. Or, yeah, or that too. Maybe both. <laughs> I think I'm ADD, like honestly, I can't stand still uh, for like a few seconds. I'm like, ah, I need this, I need that. Yeah. So when it comes to singing, yeah. since you are a singer, I'm pretty sure the ladies out there, the girls want to know, I want to know, who are some of your favorite artists? Like who are some of your favorite uh, singers? Oh wow, there's so many. Um, I love Elton John. Um, I just love his kind oh, of repertoire. Oh, you want to love Elton John. Right? He's from the UK. Exactly. <laughs> Shall I do American now? Um, I love, I love, I actually love Elvis Presley, and I grew up listening to the Beatles. I mean, I'm influenced by so many types of music: dance music, '80s pop, Duran Duran. Um, but I also love Michael Jackson, obviously. George Michael. I mean, um, yeah. Does that help answer the question? Yes, it does answer the question. So, let's say Emery woke up, and you were an artist. You were a singer. What kind of music would you be singing to the world? That's a good question. Um, well, I normally, the, the stuff I write is about my life or something I ex I've experienced. So, but I also like kind of fantasy stuff, right? Um, the first song I did was Hypnotized and it was very kind of like, I was actually in a horror movie and we wrote the song for a horror movie. I like to entertain, I like it to be fun. It can be over the top, it can yeah, be, yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't take myself too seriously. I got and you. I like to, make, you know, make people laugh or make people mm -hmm. entertained. Okay. I want to entertain people. I yeah. can't talk English today. He wants teach to me in entertain the, Can you teach me in the, in the um, intermission how to speak again? He's like, yo, I There's need to entertain song. people. <laughs> Hypnotized. There's a single right there by yeah. Emery Cooper. Yeah. Is that available? It's available worldwide. Oh my gosh, girls, guys, go out and like, you know, cop that Let me quick. hypnotize you. You feel me? Let them hypnotize <laughs> you. See, that's getting, I got, I got a little hood on you right yeah, there, yeah. Emery. You know, you got to hit your chest. You know, that's what we got to do. Go cop that real quick, okay? Cop that. Cop oh, there that. we go, a bit of video. Oh, and the video, we have the video coming up. And the video is sexy, okay? <laughs> well, you know, I don't think you, you could help but probably be, you know, kind of, you have this aura about you. 
and I'm pretty sure that it's very magnetizing, and that's a good thing, you know, because uh, my my that's mom. That's my parrot, by the way. Is that what? That's my parrot making a cameo in the video. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> awesome, that is so. But thank cool. you for your kind words. Oh. She's pretty awesome too. Why? Thank you. It's like you know, um, what is it? There was some saying that's like you know, uh, um, charisma or can get you. Through through the you know through the door anything can get you through the door but it's 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 who you are the person that you are that's gonna keep you there yeah. and keep people wanting to see you again wanting to have you around wanting to work with you so you can be shiny as a freaking light get through the door and then no connection I you know agree, so yeah. how do you when you're on auditions and how is that auditioning process like is it is it um, stressful for you is it, are you calm now that you've been doing it for a while or is it always like kind of. <sighs> That and kind it, of thing. it really comes and goes. Sometimes, okay. sometimes when you're um, when you really really want a job and you're right down to the last few, yeah. you can't help but get a little nervous. Um, okay. But I, I think with auditioning, you just have to embrace the whole thing. It's not natural. Okay. It's not um, you know we're going to get judged on not just our talent but our look. I mean, how many people yeah. have to do that on a regular basis Thank actually you. get yeah. assessed? So you can't help but sometimes take it personally. But um, you just have to love what you do. You have to love the acting. You have to. You can't take it to. Um, you have to be there for just the acting and okay. not worry about the rest of the stuff. Just worry about oh, doing a really yeah, good performance. Oh yeah, that's great. Oh, there I am. There you are. Is that a modeling <laughs> shot? Um, that was actually um, taken in New York a few months ago when I was filming out there, and that's in Soho, New York. Yeah. And I worked with a really great photographer called Rune. And, um, yeah, oh, those are great shots. Because we're going to talk about some of your movie stuff when we come back. But I do know that you did a little bit of modeling, hand modeling or something <laughs> like that. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I saw the picture. It's supposed to be a hand modeling picture. But ladies, you tell me. I mean, do you notice anything on it? Do you notice his hands? Is that what you really notice? I'm Where embarrassed about this. I'm going to blush. <laughs> I'm going to blush. Wanna. Okay, well, guess what? Guys, we, you're watching Actors eChat. I'm your host, Sonia Harley, and we'll be right back after a word from a few of our sponsors. Over her long career, Nina Fosh appeared in classic films such as Spartacus, The Ten Commandments, and An American in Paris. She received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Robert Wise's Executive Suite. In 1965, Nina Fosh arrived here at USC to begin teaching directing, and I was lucky enough to get into one of her first classes. Even as she continued acting in film and television, Nina's passion for teaching lasted for over 40 years. Her course was immensely popular because she developed her own unique style, drawing on her experiences studying with Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler, and Uta Hagen, and being directed by such icons as Vincent Minnelli, Stanley Kubrick, Cecil B. DeMille, and Otto Preminger. As I began directing, the tremendous value of her teachings became evident and how important it was to preserve them for future generations. We became close friends and at a cinema department event, we ran into my former classmate, George Lucas, who invited us up to Skywalker Ranch, where we discussed creating a DVD of her course. He agreed to finance it and on January 10th, 2002, we began taping an entire semester using a crew of USC film students. We filmed for eight hours a week for 15 weeks, and this is the result. Okay, so what are we gonna do this semester? Hey, welcome back to Actors eChat. I'm your host, Sonia Harley. Make sure that you uh, visit Actors Reporter. Go on there and check out the site. We have lots of different things on there that are beneficial for you when you watch our show. You can click on and be supportive for some of the things that we have going on. Scroll down. Tell me right now that you are like pressing that button and you're on there scrolling down to find out all of the beautiful things that we have to offer you here at Actors eChat. <laughs> okay, and so we are back actually with our amazing actor, singer, dancer, Emerus Cooper, who has the eyes that shine like the stars. If I was lost at night, I'd look in your eyes and I would find my way. I think all you guys would too. So speaking of finding your way, I know that you did uh, singing and you did some dancing and you found yourself heavily into the acting. Like, yeah. was that because it felt more comfortable for you? Well, yeah, I, from a very young age, I wanted to be an actor. I watched James Bond and I was just like, I want to be him one day. Literally be him. Wow, that's a good person Who to doesn't, be. What little boy doesn't want to <laughs> be <know>. James Bond? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so my father actually um, did a lot of Shakespeare and I grew up watching him and didn't understand a word of it. 
So I was about 13 or 14. Because okay. Shakespeare, when you're nine years old or whatever, is quite complicated. Very. So um, I watched, um, there's Sean, Sean Connery. Sean Connery, okay. He's an amazing Bond, isn't he? I don't know that. I mean, but I... You don't hey, know Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. Oh. Leave me alone. I'm flabbergasted. I just know the guy with the blonde hair like the new one. Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel Craig. He's Sean good. Connery is the legend of legends. He's the first Bond. Uh, okay. Watch Doctor No or watch any of his gold Yeah, I have to see one of those. Okay. So we were talking about my father did a lot of Shakespeare. So I did. I, I always watched my father growing up. So my mother and father were very involved with the arts. So okay. um, from about thirteen or fourteen, I, I knew that the acting was what I wanted to end up being. But uh. I did have this love for dance. So I thought, "There's Daniel Craig. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Dan. Yes, that's <coughs> the one I know. Woo! Yeah, he killed He's it. also a great <laughs> one. I can't wait for the new one. I, I think Daniel Craig is an amazing Bond. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I always knew that acting was what I'd end up doing. But I had to get the dance out of my system, so I worked as a dancer, kind of knowing that yeah. the, the career of a dancer doesn't necessarily last that long, and you don't necessarily make that much money, so the I cap's kind of low. And I'm an <laughs> ambitious boy. So okay. I was like, um, and you know, with acting, you can do it till you die, so. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, when I was about 24, I just finished doing Mamma Mia, and that kind of gave me a little bit of money to go to Hollywood and, you know, check it out. So okay. I came over to... Los Angeles at 23 or 24, and I just loved it. And I Hey, that's a perfect age to be in LA. You can get into a club, you can drink, you can get calm it down, calm it down, study, get your sides, and be ready for your auditions, right? You know what I mean? Drink a lot of water and freaking, you know, get all of the toxins that's out. Yes. That's Mama, Mama Mia. Mia, the movie. Oh, wow. And I love her. Amanda Seyfried. Yes. She's such a nice girl. I love Amanda too. She's a I, really nice I, girl. I, I love her look. Yeah. She has, like, your look. It's very it's very different, and it's very captivating. Yeah. So that's one of your earlier films. What are some other things that, that you've been in? Well, um, I came to L.A. Um, with no connections, no money. Wow. Just a big dream and a lot of confidence I had some balls back then I'm like get, wow. as I get older you get more nervous but at 23 I was I was fearless I think maybe stupid um, and it was very hard <laughs> <laughs> but a stupid. good stupid I but mean you know, you I, know. Live, I lived um, I lived in so many different houses I had a lot of bad experiences with cars you know it was just all those you know trials and tribulations did you ever live in your car I did actually for three nights oh, it was wow horrible. was it was it hot was it a hot Los Angeles time or was it like kind of cold we don't really have I a was winter off here, drive I remember being really <laughs> embarrassed because I had got kicked out of someone's house she was crazy and I actually she took a whole month's rent and I was kicked out oh, in a week no. not because it's for stupid reasons not my <laughs> fault actually. yeah so I hadn't got any rent money, and I stayed in a rent wreck off Mulholland, which was pretty awful. So that was five years ago. So my life has got a lot better. Wow. Um, but you, but, you it's know, those things that make you appreciate where you are, you, right? It makes you appreciate everything. And, um, you know, then I started getting, you know, acting work within about six months, and I got my SAG card and a ah. few roles on, like, you know, American shows, and it was just, it started to trickle in, and I just kept at it, and there'd be slow months of it, and then the last couple of years, it's just really kind of picked up. Yeah. Well, na name some of your, your fun. Okay, so there's CSI New York yep. that you did. Yeah. Um, how was that experience working with, with that team and, and the way that they, you know, the order of their show? Some people are really uptight, you know, well, like, I, ah. I auditioned for it and I was like, yeah, yeah. They, got, they gave me the role and they were, I was like, so I'm going to New York. And they were like, no, you're filming in LA. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just remember working on that show being uh, like a rabbit in headlights. Okay. I, I remember you. being like, all these cameras and all these extras and it was like all on me and I remember just being so nervous wow. um, because I'd never worked you know on that kind of scale exactly. of production of TV show you. yeah so it was quite overwhelming and I think that had I done it now I would be a lot better <laughs> yeah but those are like the stepping stones you know yeah. that I guess that you take as an actor my question I have a question to you like when you go and you're auditioning for a role do you keep your accent or do you drop your accent and just be American so that you come across with an American accent as opposed to, do you know what I mean? It's do, a good question. Yeah, if it's an American role, I go in as American and I stay okay. the American the whole time. But um, if it's English or whatever accent it is, I try and go in in kind of character and then maybe sometimes when I'm the role, the audition is finished, I'll go back to maybe being English and hopefully they'll be wow, your American accent is really good and you know. But um, yeah, if, if, the Amer if it's an American role, I try yeah. and be American the whole time. You've got to fool them. You do. I mean, yeah. I, that's what I was going to say. Has that, I'm pretty sure that's helped you, right? Especially when they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know you had an accent. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, it's, the American accent is hard. I did a movie last year, and I had to be American for a whole two, six weeks. 
and it was um you know i stayed in america all day oh, even wow. at lunchtime and you know, you start to become a slightly different person because as soon as you put that accent on, yeah. no matter how much you try and stay true to who you are, yeah. you're still going to have a slightly different energy about you. Yeah. So it's about trying to keep your own energy with the accent. With the accent. Yeah, exactly. So, so that it comes so across true. Yeah, I, I got you. So Desperate Housewives, you were on there. There are some hot chicks on Desperate Housewives. Yeah. How was that, Emery? <laughs> it was awesome. I'm like, who hasn't had a crush on Eva Longoria, right? And I, I know. <laughs> I remember being like, when I met her, she's just so hot and really nice and sexy. And I was just like, wow. Wow. <laughs> I can't actually really talk right now. <laughs> so but was she, her personality really cool? Yeah. She's adorable. Yeah. And I remember she was just like, super smart and she was studying for her PhD and she was so passionate about politics and I was like wow she's a real ambassador for you know just I just really respect actors that are intelligent and she's yeah. really using her name for good and I have a lot of respect for her yeah so that is and I had good. a lot of fun working with her she was fun Woo! Guess what? I think we have a question. Yay! By the way, thank you, all of our actors, eat chatters. We appreciate you live Monday through Friday from Hollywood, California. Emrys, our question is from Florida, and they would like to know: Is that a difficult transition, leaving England and coming and living in the United States? Yes. The answer is yes. It was very difficult because. Uh, a for one, I had to go and get my visa to work in the United States. So you have to apply, and it's a lot of, it's like you get quite a lot of money, and you have to prove your worth. Oh wow! You have to prove you're of a certain league of actor, and then I um, oh. luckily got my green card maybe two years ago. So that was another hard process. So it, it's just two years ago? Yeah. Really? Wow. About two, okay. year, two years ago, I got my green card, and it was when I got it, I was just over the moon. As, you, as it's very hard. I know a lot of actors that have been turned down. So when you have a green card, that means you can stay here like indefinitely, or how, how does that work? I it work? It works for 10 years, and then I could become an American, an American citizen if oh. I want. So after five years, maybe I'll have both passports. Can you, yeah, could you do like dual citizenship? Yeah. I want to be dual citizenship somewhere. You just need to get married, and then you're, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, so back to the housewives. Mm -hmm. What was your role? When I, you did that show. I played Richard and he was um he's a very smart businessman and he got he was kind of um Eva Longoria's husband was losing his company and I believe me and my business partner were buying it from Eva and she was trying to kind of ah. finesse it not to happen. So she was very trying to be smart but she didn't necessarily know what she was talking about. So ah, um, okay. I had to pr pretend I was very intelligent for a couple of days, you know. Did it work? It worked. It worked on screen, right? Hopefully. <laughs> I was really like, what does this mean? Uh, yeah, well, you know, hopefully uh, <laughs> you guys will, will get a chance to catch that, find that episode online. Um, there is another movie, uh, Kushitara, I think, right? You said Kushitara. it very well. Kushitara, Thank you. Yeah. Kushitara. And um, I believe it, it stands for the power of love or pattern something. Pattern of love. Pa pattern, pattern of love. That's actually just the movie's name, Kushitara Pattern of Love. Oh, Kushitara But a Kushitara is a, yeah, a weaving, it's, you know, you weave this kush beautiful Kushitara, so. It's something you wear? Yeah, you can wear it. It's like it. a wrap? Oh, okay. Or you can lay on it. It's like a blanket kind of thing? You can do whatever you want on it. Oh. <laughs> so you can travel. You're like, I got a traveling cloth of love. Exactly. <laughs> They're very beautiful. They take, you know, six, nine months to make. I mean, these are very wow. intricate. It's amazing that... Do yeah. they make them according to the person they're, that they're designing them for? Yep, they can be suggested. Oh, okay. And we have a question. Where was that shot? It was shot in Bhutan, which is an incredible, an incredibly hidden little kingdom in the Himalaya mountains between China and India. And I actually was there for um, the very first two months of 2013. So now the film's coming out in, I believe, April. It's going to be available everywhere. Yay! Um, but yeah, it's going to be... It's the, I'm actually... The first ever Western actor to do a Bhutanese movie in a lead role. So I'm actually holding wow. that title forever. Forever, so yeah, because you're the first. Yeah, I and there can never be another after the first. Look um, right there. You guys check that out on the screen. It's um, it's it's prob Bhutan was a very life changing experience because it, I actually had no contact with the outside world for pretty much the whole time. No social media, no phone, nothing. Wow. So I went cold turkey. Yeah, I bet. You'd but find it really hard. You'd really? Be, you'd be shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh wow, yeah, that looks beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Did they make you one? Did you get a I Kishitar? was given one, yeah. <gasps> Yay! Um, and I have to say they're the warmest. Um, they're so content and actually Bhutan, if you Google it, is one of the happiest places on earth. Voted oh. happiest place on earth. And oh, I, wow. before I went I was like, it can't be that, you know. It was just You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. And I got there and it was like literally it is the happiest place on earth because they're so content with what they've been given. They aren't always seeking more and they can. Right, they yeah. they have this philosophy, and it's it's um, 
called Gross National Happiness. And I really, I was really happy the whole time. And I've taken a little oh. part of Bhutan with me. And I, I'm so proud to have I can sense that. that. I see the happiness, really. Yeah. Because I think when you're really, truly happy, it totally does transfer. Yeah. We got another question. Yes, we have another question. They said, can you give us a sample of your American accent? Mm. Um, sure. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Um, my name is Emerson Cooper. I'm from L.A. And um, I'm having a great time here today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> awesome. That worked for me. What about you guys? Okay. So, Dolly. Now they're going to write in and go, I that would like bad. to know, is your tea very good, dear? <coughs> it's lovely. It's Yorkshire. From Yorkshire. Well, Yorkshire. I'll do the Yorkshire accent. So, my dad's from up north of the UK. Okay. So, if you speak like that, it's from Yorkshire. Ah, what so about, um, what is it? Uh, Liverpool. Liverpool, they speak like that. Oh, Liverpool you speak like that. Scouser. It's very, oh, it's very... Right, right there, love. Right there, love. Right there, love. That's a Liverpool accent. Liverpool. That's where the Beatles are from. Ah. Yeah. Oh, the Beatles. Yeah. The Beatles are from Liverpool. Yeah. So, like, have you gone to the places where the Beatles were, like, in Liverpool? Do you ever do I've that? I've actually performed where the Beatles made their West Coast debut, and that was in Avalon in Hollywood, and I performed where the Beatles made their West Coast debut. So I also made my West Coast debut there. It doesn't get any better than That's that, That's my only link to the Beatles. Memories Cooper perform where the Beatles perform. You are watching <laughs> Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Sonia Harley, and we'll be right back after a word from some of our sponsors. Bye. The great thing about NL Media is it's a one-stop shop. We are soup to nuts. We have writers, directors, producers, animators, motion graphics artists, editors, videographers, musicians, all under one roof. And we are a boutique creative house where we actually do the creative at much more affordable price and have the staff in-house to execute it professionally. My name is John Palacio. My name is Luis Montez. My name is Paul Robinson. I am Jesse Cervantes. I'm Curtis Peel. My name is Ben Joran. One of the most common questions we have from potential clients is how does it work? What happens when you engage NNOW Media to create a video, a marketing campaign? It first starts with, you know, obviously having the phone conversation with the client, brainstorm with them to come up with a really good concept and a really good idea to push whatever they're trying to do to the next level. Only with that in mind can we really try to tailor a concept and a script for their exact audience that fits in with their branding and the message they want to tell. We'll storyboard it out, get a real rough idea uh, of what we want to do. We'll then present the client with a couple of options, different ways that we could go with some of the things that we've come up with. And they'll say, this is good, and then we'll come back and we'll start animating that or designing it or editing it. Our clients are generally, you know, like to be really hands-on, and we'd like to hear from you kind of all along the board. There's no surprises. What we like to do with every partner is we actually create a page on the NNOW website so they can give feedback, and that way, when the time we get to the final product, you know, usually there's not a whole lot more revisions to do because they, we've already been working together the whole time. The big difference is that, that real personal creative touch. We have a creative group that can execute that vision, whether it's animation, video, motion graphics, and do so with some unique creative that is custom tailored to that business. You know, dream it up. It's video. It's magic. It can happen. Hey guys, welcome back. Sonia Harley here. And yes, I'm with the amazing actor, singer, dancer, Emrys Cooper right here. Yes, the energy is so good. And I don't know if you feel like you're an interesting person, but there's a show called Person of Interest. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I, I just want you to tell me how it feels to be on that show, and then we're going to go to a clip of that show. Well, it felt very good to be on that show because I was a huge fan of the show. And then... Um, the role I got was kind of a dream role because we talked about James Bond and ah. I got to play an MI6 spy. So it kind of was a dream come true, yeah. Let's take a look at it. I'll bring him in. No need for that. You want me to disappear him? I have a few questions for him. What is Blackwood hiding? Ah! These invisible lines we draw on the world. 
I realize they have no meaning. Well, ladies, I don't know about you, but I think every girl likes a bad guy. Now, you were a bad guy, and you had this look on your face of, like, you didn't feel anything. I, I could just see that, like, sort of sociopath kind of whatever. I'm doing what I got to do. How, how do you get yourself in that mindset, like, when you're doing a role like that? I think you have to really understand what the character's been through to get to that point. Um, he thinks he's doing it for the right reasons, but I think he's been very hurt. Um, as he's been let down by his boss, who he finds out is a double spy, he's a KGB spy. So basically, oh. all the work I've been doing, all the people I've been killing, I find out that it's basically been potentially in vain and I've been used. <gasps> so um, I, oh, no. I, I think it's, he loses faith. Um, I don't necessarily think he was born bad. So if, you know, when you see the show, you can see at the beginning of the show, he's kind of fighting for the right causes, but you know, I got yeah. you. So you're the you're the son of. No, I'm um, I'm basically John Greer, who's um, the head of the Samaritan. He's like the, you know the main bad guy on the show. Um, he I play his younger the self. Younger self. So they they do flashbacks. <coughs> yeah. So I'm ah. I'm the flashback to 1973. Um, him at 30, and it's really cool because you're getting to know more about him and yeah. how and how he got to where he is now. To where he is now. Yeah. Oh wow. That is, because I love that show. I love anything that's like super intense. You know, television's gotten so intense yeah. with all the shows. It's almost like, why even go to the freaking movies? Yeah. Because you can watch television and just get like so captivated and caught up. Like, what, what, are, what is your, um, if, if you had a chance to stay on the show for like so many episodes, like would you want to be like a permanent fixture on oh, that show? Yes, please. Um, I, I would love to, and the doors, I mean, I, if you see the end of the episode, the doors still open, so hopefully, um, I think the, the fans and the, and the viewers liked, liked the flashbacks, so hopefully it could con continue. I, hope, I loved playing that role, you guys, and, if, yeah. and if not on Person of Interest, I think that role is a role I want to do on an, another show, maybe we could do a spin-off. Oh yeah, now yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> you guys heard that. Go on and tweet about Emrys Cooper and about his role. Let them know how much you love it, that way they can bring him back. We have a question. What was the audition process like to get such a major role in a major TV show like that? Well, it was actually really, um, really great because I just filmed the audition at my home. Um, as they were auditioning nice. in New York, really? I, uh, I got called from my agent and said, would you like to audition for this role? And it was funny because a couple of weeks before that, my acting coach had told me to write down what kind of roles I wanted to play. And I wrote down MI6 spy, badass, <laughs> multi-layered, tortured. And yeah. I wrote down this really complex role. And then my agent sent me the audition for Person of Interest. I'm like, oh my God, this is the role I just um, wrote down. And I did the audition on tape. And about four days later, I got the job. And then I flew to New York maybe three days after that. And I was there for about two weeks in September time the last year. Wow, he, so he's kind of like a spy kind of thing, or like, so I, there must have been like action scenes, so you doing like the dancing and stuff earlier on, mm -hmm. does that help with like any choreographed like, you know, ah, you stuff know what, like I that? I actually really do, do think it does, because it's weird, dancers are very um, in touch with their bodies and aware of their surroundings, because you have to kind of know. Yeah. So um, I actually, for some reason, this year I've worked with guns a lot, I'm wow. becoming, I guess, a man more because um, <laughs> three of the jobs I've done this year, I've been shooting guns. So I'm actually, I do actually quite enjoy it. I'm like a boy with a toy. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it, action scenes are really hard to film and they're very technical a lot of the time. Um, but you know, and when you're shooting guns, sometimes there's explosions. So, and uh, and actually, the first time at the end of the episode, you see um, my MI6 fire burn. Oh, wow. But when we filmed it one time, it actually, you know, really burned yeah. and it was like quite scary. Oh. <laughs> um, so you have to just roll with the punches. I got you. Okay, so we we are in uh, what, what what episode of a uh, uh, person of interest? So this, what is this? What is this right here? This is this, this is, is um, beautiful. That's in Th um, Thailand. Um, whilst filming till we meet again, I was oh. there in June two thousand last year, two thousand fourteen. That's um, stills from the movie. There's me Aww. in a hammock. It was a really hard life filming scenes, Aww. drinking a beer in a hammock, you know. Yeah, that seems so really we worked, difficult. Yeah, we worked in some of the most beautiful. There's me and the director, Bank. Um, okay, cool. That's actually the first time we ever met. 
Oh wow, right in that picture. Yeah. Don't you love when they capture moments like yeah. that? That is awesome. And so is this a love story? What, what is this uh, movie about? <coughs> it's about backpackers in Thailand. It um, starts off in New York about this couple that go to Thailand and they get split up. And my character David comes in and basically um, has Aww. an affair with the lead girl and there we go, there, there's before sexy stuff starts to happen. Oh, pretty intense. Yeah, and mum and dad are gonna love that scene. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. It's a really amazing love story, but also very real. It's kind of in this, like you know blue Valentine. It's shot very. Um, a lot of improvisation. I got it. Um, it felt just being in those amazing surroundings can mm -hmm. really invigorate emotions and set you off. So it was. It was very Feel easy. Feel really free. Yeah. You know, like I, I think like when it you know talks of like people backpacking, it just seems like people just want to go out and get as close to nature as possible and of course stay safe while you're doing it but I think that um, it, it definitely clears your head I mean cuz you know people think about like uh, Christ or whatever and the disciples and they were all like backpackers I, I have mm. the, this like weird thing in my head that Jesus Christ had to be really in good shape he had to be hot yeah if he climbed all those mountains and had all the <laughs> disciples you know I'm like wow they must have been like a really he was hot cut up. exactly he was, had yeah. to be cut, he, wasn't, you know? he wasn't jacked he was cut so maybe that's why they were upset with him because he's hot no yeah. just kidding <laughs> but yeah so altered perception wow look at that I mean I would love to change my eye color w what is this movie about it's about this new um, drug that's been introduced to get rid of false perceptions. Mm. And basically, um, I play this character called Stephen, who, and his wife is um, very, very jealous. So, and I think she's got paranoia. So basically, three couples um, use this drug to get rid of false perceptions, but a lot of things go wrong in the process. Oh, okay. And let's just say my character isn't ne necessarily who he says he is. Mm. Uh, so a lot comes out, and then. Is it like really twist, on. like a you twister? Twist, yeah, it's a sci-fi like movie. Alfred Hitchcocky kind of thing. It's kind of yeah, yeah sci-fi. Yeah. It's fun. Um, I love sci-fi. Sci yeah, yes. me too. Yes, I haven't seen it yet, but it was a really intense um, shoot. I mean, I had to. We, me and my wife got very physical at times, so wow. it was quite. Luckily, I worked with an amazing actress, Jay Taylor, and um, really good director, great cast, and it was, it was a lot of um, meaty, meaty scenes and. And what was really hard about it is I had to play the character one way and then, you know, you start to find out things about him. So it was ah, kind of like, okay. very, it was great fun to play that. Yeah. So tell me, like, okay, I saw them putting the needle in your eye. Did, did, it, did it change, like, your visual, too, or? They don't put it in my eye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess you guys got, we have a question. Yes. When you have such large roles, how do you learn your lines? Um, good question. I... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes when just it doesn't make sense to you, but sometimes when you really understand the character, it just goes in very effortlessly. But um, I have all sorts of process that I use, um, but sometimes I like working with my friend. I work with a friend that reads them back and then if I get it wrong, they tell me and it just repetition. Ah. Um, but learning lines still to the, it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. But um, sometimes a role just doesn't come in easily, so. Well, talking about guns, what is the parting shot? Parting shot is um, a short film I filmed last year. I don't know exactly when. Ooh. And I play another MI6 spy, trying Yay, to save the world. I love you in all these, like, <laughs> know. you know, these roles. It's like bad boy. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do too. <laughs> um, so that was a really great experience because it was a 48-hour film festival, so you had to come up with the idea, film it, edit it, and submit oh, it in cool. 48 hours. Oh, that's fun. So did you, did you have like a group of people that you work yeah, with? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So we submitted yeah, it. Yeah, that's we, like um, challenging. Yeah, you know? we pulled it off and we got it in the top 10. It was the Producers Guild of America. Oh, and a cool. lot of people watched the film and liked it, so. Yay, got another question. You know, you're so handsome. You do any modeling? Um, <coughs> thank you. I've done, <laughs> I've done modeling and stuff, but uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> There it is. I've done hand modeling, obviously. That's a hand modeling picture, girl. I'm blushing right now. By the way, I wasn't naked when I shot that. They airbrushed my ass. His undies right off. They did, seriously. They just, he had on undies and they just said, whoosh, whoosh, we're taking it, you know, see what they can they do. They should pay me more money. I remember exactly, when, yeah. you know, and they probably said, no, we don't have that much money. We'll yeah. just take them off ourselves. That's kind of, they raped you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been raped. <laughs> We had another question. So we understand that you have played the role of sex. Yes. What is that about? <laughs> well, I, I um, play the role of sex on Blackish. 
So oh, um, basically, yeah. Andre um, is very worried about his daughter having sex because she's now dating a French boy. And I play a recurring kind of nightmare in the, it's called, I, I'm called sex. You're so called I'm the sex, physicalization okay. of sex in the show. What are some of the things that you say to her? Um, like, do you come in right when they're about to kiss and you say like, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I, I have more things with him. So I oh, introduce okay. myself, hi, I'm sex. I'm here to see your daughter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just freak him out, really. Oh, oh, that's cute. I think it's on next week. A Anthony. Oh, Anthony Anderson. Anthony Anderson, he's awesome. He's a funny he's guy. He's hilarious. Yeah, the show, when I got on, I, I hadn't obviously heard about the show because I filmed my episode before it even started airing. Oh, okay. And but I have to say, the energy on set, I've never worked on an American comedy before. The energy on set was so fun. Yeah. I want to do more of that. Yeah it's, yeah, it's always good when you're having fun. As time goes by, everybody's happy. Yeah. Okay, what do you prefer? Do you prefer films or television? Um, good question. I don't really have a preference. It's all about the project. Um, I love the process of making TV because it's quick and the turnaround. Um, but making a film is just, you know, if you're working on an amazing project that could hopefully touch lots of people. I, I love both the genres. I mean, okay. both mediums. Okay, you know what? Um, Guess what, guys? So uh, we're going to be, my name is Sonia Harley. You're watching Actors E-Chat, and we'll be right back right after a word from our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Have you been waiting for a simple and cost-effective alternative to ISDN? No need to wait any longer. Introducing IPDTL from InQuality. IPDTL is a revolutionary yet easy-to-use web page which uses Chrome to stream audio to and from anywhere on Earth. Well, audio quality with IPDTL is equivalent to, yet far less expensive than ISDN, and with no connection charges. No proprietary hardware or software needed. Just download the Chrome browser and use it. To find out more and to get a free account for your station, go to IPDTL.com. IPDTL is perfect for radio stations and voice talent alike, and can work anywhere in the world. Well, anywhere with the Internet, that is. It's here. Go to IPDTL.com and sign up today. IPDTL, the game changer you've been waiting for. IPDTL is an amazing new technology. In fact, go right now to IPDTL.com forward slash AE and there you'll find out how you can get rid of your ISDN, how you can do live television broadcast in full HD, and it's very cost effective. We've been using it for pioneering new technology with our broadcast out of Istanbul on Actors eChat. Go there right now. Hey guys, what's up? Sonia Harley here, and we are back with the amazing actor, Emrys Cooper. We were talking a little bit about Blackish and some of the shows that he has that are coming up on TV that you can see. But you know, I want to get more into the up and coming things that you that we want people to check you out, like Kushitara, is that what it's called? Yeah, Kushitara, yeah. you gotta look out for that one. It's the movie I did in Bhutan, um, and it will be coming out, I think, maybe April time. April, that's but, like um, right around my birthday. Cool, well you have to come to the screening. Oh my God, um, that'd be so awesome. That'll Let's be do it. Um, <laughs> that will be available in select theaters and VOD and on demand and all that stuff. So just look out for Kushitara, yeah. Kushitara, you guys, make sure you go and you uh, check it out. What, what other things do we have coming out? Um, Alter Perception, the sci-fi movie we talked about. Oh, is that the one where you're holding a gun? No, it's a sci-fi one. I, no, I got what in that one. What about the gun ones? Any gun <laughs> ones coming out? Uh, Alter Perception, I'm not having a gun, but I, um, I'm doing a lot of bad things. Oh, okay. Right on. So then we gotta we've got check that um, out. Till We Meet Again. Till We Meet Again. Oh, and that's going to yes. be the movie I shot in Thailand. And that is uh, going to be doing the film festival circuit and then okay. probably released later in 2015. But um, I'm really excited about all three of them because I've never had starring roles in movies. So uh, Kushitara was my first star starring role in a film. Wow. And well, that's the happy place, right? Yeah, the happy place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of the roles I had in the past were supporting or, you know, minor roles. But yeah, this year is exciting because I have yeah. More screen time. Yeah. Yay. You know what? And I know we're talking about film stuff, but this, you know, entertaining Mr. Sloan, was, that was a uh, theater? Yeah, role? that was a um, play I did three years ago. So how, how is it different, like theater and, and film? 
Um, very different. I mean, yeah, the rehearsal process for a play is you rehearse for a whole month, you get to really work on something with a film, you kind of go in and... I got you. Um, just the live audience makes it very different. Um, but entertaining Mr. Sloan was a, an incredible experience that really pushed me, challenged me, frightened the hell out of me as an actor, but it, it also made me grow and I worked See, with See, that's why I wanted to ask you that, because I figured, I, I, I wanted to hear you say that, because that came before what you're doing now, right? Mm -hmm. So it did help you. Yeah, like, it, it as, we did. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so it made actors, you, yeah. you have to push yourself into the unknown and um, you have to be willing to fail. I got um, you. But you know, I think the role was very demanding. It was the lead in the play, so. Oh, wow. A lot Let of me go back to that picture of entertaining Mr. Sloan. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that might be my underwear. That, <laughs> that might be my body. The, hey, they didn't <laughs> remove them. So that's a good thing, right? I've still got the underwear. Yes, yeah, still it has the underwear anymore, on that though. on that picture, and that's good. I'm I'm really really excited. I'm so glad that you came out to Actors E Chat to I'm hang to with here. me, Sonia Harley. Yes, and interview you. And your energy is great. And so um, is yours. I think that what we're gonna do. Thank you. We're gonna go and let you guys know exactly where you can find him, Reese Cooper. We're gonna talk about all his websites and where you can catch them. You want to let people know where they can get a hold well, of them. Well, there I am on IMDb. IMDb? The International Internet Movie, movie, da da movie Database. Database. <laughs> <laughs> Internet Movie Database. <laughs> database. database. Internet Movie Database. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm English. We say data. Data? Um, there's my data. website, emeriscooper.com. Oh, you said data. OK, I got you. Yes. Right there, guys. Is that Twitter? That's um, f That was my website. There's Facebook. Facebook, Please yay. like me. I've not got many likes yet. Oh, I've, I've I'll just go created like that you site. All my Sonia Harley people, go like Emery Cooper. Um, there's my Twitter. Right on. Love it. Oh, there there's my are. stuff. Hello. <laughs> hey, right on, guys. I need to support your Kickstarter, right? Yes, you do. Well, it's over, but you can still support it. Oh, and there's my Twitter. Yay. I'll be following you. I've You're following me. I've already me. stalked you. Okay. I've looked through those tweets. He's already following me. Now let's take a look. Okay guys, now let's take a look at this. Hi, I'm Sonia Harley, one of your Actors eChat hosts. Thank you for joining us on Actors eChat. We are now six million viewers strong from all over the world, and we really appreciate you. Actors eChat shoots live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time from the Pepper J Production Studio right in Hollywood, California. Want to see all of today's episode or any other Actors eChat episode? Please visit actorsentertainment.com and put the talent's name in the search box. For instance, like if you're looking for Sonia Harley, for me, put in Sonia Harley and we'll take you right where you need to go. And go ahead and visit the Actors Entertainment on imdb.com. That's the internet movie database to see the more than 1,300 entertainment industry professionals that have been guests on Actors eChat. And social media is so important. So please follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment Fan Page. And don't forget to like us, because those likes, they really do help out. Stay tuned for our Actors Reporter animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards. Great job, and Now Media, and Pepper J Productions, and Terrific Singing by Melissa Suzanne. And now, a special thank you to today's Actors eChat guest. Hey guys, what's up world? I'm so glad that you are back with Actors eChat. Make sure that you go and you follow Actors eChat. Become a part of all of the things that we're doing so you can stay updated with all the amazing actors, comedians, singers, everyone that we bring here on the show. Today we had amazing Emerson Cooper. Make sure you go and you check him out. All of his websites that we shared with you, the movies that are coming up, it's going to freaking rock. Make sure that you do it. Sonia Harley's asking you to do it, okay? So um, I want you to just, if you have one thing to say to an up-and-coming actor, what would it be? Keep believing in yourself and don't take the knocks. Just keep, if you fall forward, you're falling forward. And um, yeah, enjoy it. Love what you do. Be passionate. Be brave. Yeah, and thank you so much, Emrys, for coming thank on the you. show. Ow! Yes, and you know what? I have something to give you. You know what, guys? I found out that when you leave someone with something tangible, they might forget, but then when they see it, they're like, oh, yeah, here's one of my bands. I love that. Sonia Harley. I'm never going to forget you now. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching Actors eChat. I'm your host, and we will see you guys again soon. Big kiss. Thank mm. you so much for listening and watching. Yes. Thanks, Pepper J. <laughs> Thanks, Pepper J. Thanks, Actors E. Actors E, bye. <laughs> What's that? Actors E Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee, a bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl. Wait, no, that's not right.
Actor Z Chat Show. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Chat. Remember to visit ActorZ.com and enjoy all your past Actors E-Chat episodes with celebrity favorites. Look in the search box to find who you're looking for. Actors E has had over 1,300 entertainment celebrity guests and over 6 million viewers worldwide. Join us every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Thank you for watching Actors E-Chat, live from Hollywood. Actors E-Chat is a co-production of Pepper J Productions and Live Video Inc., a Kurt Kelly company. All rights expressly reserved in all formats. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? Kid, let me tell you, whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%, Thanks. working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent, but I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney to pay for the stitches. I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics, don't follow all the tabs Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps Go to Actors Reporter Actors Reporter Actors Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat and info one-stop shop, it's free and on the net. Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. ActorsReporter.com. So how can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors Reporter. Got a call back. I'll do it. Yay! Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Gruber. Thanks for joining us on Actor Z Live Chat Show. I'm just one of your Actor Z hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actor Z Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actor Z is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time, as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com, and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working. <laughs>